Are humans the only animals that enjoy a nice drink after a hard day's work? Nah, uh uh. Hey everyone, Lisa Green here for D News. There comes a time in everyone's life when we ask ourselves, wait a minute, do animals get drunk? This is usually asked when we're drunk and possibly watching viral videos on YouTube, like the classic video of this little squirrel that got a little too hammered snacking on fermented pumpkins that were left outside these folks' house for Halloween. I die pretty much every time I watch that one. Just like humans, animals can get drunk and some species actively pursue intoxication out in the wild. Of course, these animals aren't hitting the local rain forest fridge to crack open a can of beer. They're hitting the fermented fruit, fermented nectars, pumpkins, and berries all contain small amounts of alcohol, which is perfect if you're a small creature. And smaller creatures are the ones usually getting drunk because it doesn't take as much to do them in. Take for instance the tiny pen-tailed tree shrew which loves to sip the nectar of the Bertan palm in the Malaysian rainforest. Thanks to its own production of yeast, the Bertan palm produces fermented nectar that's about 4% alcohol, the same as some beers. Animal physiologists in Germany observed the pen tailed tree shrews making their way over to the Bertan palm every night, sometimes making two or three trips and hanging out for a few hours. And the tree shrews aren't alone. Tumblr's favorite, the slow loris, also enjoy a nightly brew in the rainforest. But even though these guys love to drink, the animal kingdom's real alcoholics are vervet monkeys. Vervet monkeys have the same rates of alcohol consumption in their colonies as humans do. Most of the monkeys drink some, 12% drink heavily, 5% drink excessively, and a small group don't drink at all. In this species, the monkey youth also tend to drink more than the grown-up monkeys. Sounds familiar? Uh-huh, it's all coming together now. These mischievous little furballs are cray-cray. The ones that live in the Caribbean islands are known for snagging alcoholic drinks from tourists lounging on the beach. In the past, they were known for gorging themselves on fermented sugarcane crops being grown by the rum industry. Now hop on over to Australia and Darwin locals are about to experience an annual phenomenon dubbed drunk lorikeet season. Around October or November, hundreds of lorikeets exhibit telltale symptoms of drunkenness. They can be seen falling over, having difficulty flying, or flying into things. They also become very friendly with humans, which is not typical of lorikeets. Scientists in the area believe this happens because there are lots of fleshy fermenting fruit available for the birds to snack on in the fall, and a similar phenomenon happens in Vienna with the songbirds. But here's the sad part. About half of the drunk lorikeets seen by vets in Darwin, Australia die. Just like too much alcohol kills humans, too much alcohol kills animals. The lorikeets Lorikeets are so small, their little bodies just can't handle it. Which, FYI, is why human peoples should never give alcohol to animal peoples. So, there you go. D News answering your life altering questions one video at a time. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll see you again soon with more updates.